We've seen how to construct molecular orbital diagrams and how to predict the energies of MOs. The next skill we'll develop is sketching what those orbitals look like. As you know, orbitals can be either bonding, non-bonding, or antibonding. Bonding molecular orbitals come from the in-phase overlap of atomic orbitals. Electrons that live in bonding orbitals spend most of their time in between the bonded nuclei. Non-bonding orbitals are usually orbitals that don't overlap with other orbitals at all. They're just atomic orbitals, like 1s or 2p, or hybrid orbitals, like sp or sp3. Antibonding orbitals come from the out-of-phase overlap of orbitals, so they have a node between the two adjacent nuclei. Let's start with the sigma bonding orbitals. Most sigma bonds come from the overlap of hybrid orbitals, either with hydrogen 1s orbitals or with other hybrid orbitals on larger atoms. All hybrid orbitals look basically the same, whether they're sp, sp2, or sp3 hybridized. They have one large lobe pointed toward another atom, and a little tiny lobe, I call it a vestigial nubbin, pointed in the opposite direction. When two hybrid orbitals point directly at each other, they constructively overlap to make a new orbital that's largest in between the two nuclei. A CC sigma bonding orbital, for instance, we would draw something like this. Pi bonding orbitals arise from the side-to-side -side overlap of adjacent p orbitals. Each of the p orbitals has two lobes, one above the plane of the other atoms around it, the other below. They overlap in phase to create a pi bond, which we can draw a couple of different ways. When we look at these drawings, we can imagine why it's difficult to rotate around pi bonds. If you were to rotate one of the atoms by 90 degrees, the p orbitals wouldn't overlap anymore the pi bond would be broken. Non-bonding molecular orbitals just look like the atomic or hybrid orbitals they came from. In this class, they'll usually be lone pairs in hybrid orbitals, like the sp hybridized lone pair on HCN, or an empty p orbital on boron or a carbocation. Antibonding orbitals come from the same atomic orbitals as their bonding counterparts, just with out-of-phase overlap. This means that the orbitals essentially cancel each other out in between the two atoms. There's a node between them. We usually draw sigma star orbitals like this, mostly outside the two atoms, with a node in between. Make sure that you switch phases whenever you cross a node. Pi star orbitals are typically drawn like this, slightly angled away from the area between the two nuclei. Whether they are sigma or pi, the appearance of molecular orbitals changes slightly when two different atoms are bonded to each other. Let's examine the MO diagram of a carbonyl group to illustrate this. The CO sigma bond comes from an sp2 hybrid orbital on carbon, overlapping with an sp2 hybrid orbital on oxygen. And the CO pi bond comes from p orbitals on each atom. But since oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, the oxygen orbitals are lower in energy than the carbon orbitals. And the resulting bonding orbitals are closer in energy to oxygen's orbitals than to carbon's. The result of this is that the bonding orbitals are larger on the more electronegative atom. This really just means that the bonding electrons hang out closer to oxygen on average than they do closer to carbon. Similarly, the antibonding orbitals are closer in energy to carbon's orbitals than to oxygen's. This means that the antibonding orbitals are larger on the less electronegative atom. They look something like this. 
Since the antibonding orbitals don't actually have any electrons in them, this doesn't mean much for a solitary molecule. But if you begin to think about it reacting, any new electrons that are added to this orbital will tend to go toward the carbon rather than the oxygen. We'll see how that, uh, how that influences chemical reactions in the next class.